The current generation of cyber attacks that we are seeing are what we call the fifth generation. These attacks are coming from multiple vectors, from the cloud, from our mobile, and from the traditional network and endpoint. Uh, these attacks are what we call polymorphic, so they change Pol their shape. Polymorphic. Yeah, they change their shape every time. So it's not like in previous generation you could say, this is how I identify an attack, this is how a, you know, a malicious file looks like, it has a signature, I know how to identify it. Now the hackers are changing the form of the file and the and the attack every time, so it's very hard to spot it. And is that considered a level five attack or a level six attack? Uh, level that? five right now. And and what's more important, the hackers are using tools that are basically using the most sophisticated tools, like government grade level tools. Basically, all the tools that state sponsored organizations are developing today are finding themselves at the end to the general criminal hacking community. What, what are they trying to get? They're trying to get money? Are they trying to get um, IP from companies? Are they trying to steal secrets from the government? All of the above. I mean, they, there are a lot of trying to steal secrets. There's a lot of, in the, there's a big industry today of blackmailing ransomware and things like that that are, uh, that are happening. Uh, uh, there are just hacktivists that want to show that they right. can, that to deface sites, to... But what percentage, to you, what percentage do you think is economically driven versus as you said, the sort of hacktivist who wants to just show that they can break through the perimeter. I think the evolution of uh, cryptocurrencies have made the uh, uh, economical crime something that really exists today. 20 years ago, it was very hard to do it because there is no way to charge money. Right. Today, there is a but, you way know, to charge money. We constantly hear about um, you know, thousands or millions of credit cards or usernames uh, getting hacked, and yet then what you don't hear about is on the very individual micro level, those accounts being used necessarily to extract money or something else. Uh, they are being used. Usually the credit cards block them in a very small amount and absorbs the damage, but it does happen. And basically a stolen credit card number is, uh, is sold in, uh, in the black market right. for X number of cents or X number of dollars, depending on that. And, and the hackers know how to try and uh, create trade out of it. My, my biggest fear is a massive hack that actually cripples and destroys a bank. Is that possible? Have that's these guys more done than, enough? That's more than possible, and we are seeing things like that. that cyber attacks that destroys big organizations. By the way, these things happen. It's not science fiction. This year, this week, we're actually commemorating the WannaCry attack that happened a year ago right. and demonstrated that most of like these theoretical cases of what an attack can cause are real. That happened. I mean, factories were closed. Almost an entire country in Ukraine was shut down. Uh, factories, by the way, all over the world, hospitals were, uh, emergency rooms right. were shut down. So it proved that a large scale attack like that can happen. And so what do you worry about at night? Um, I'm worried, I mean, for us, it's about developing the answers to that and mainly educating the market that we should step up to this fifth generation. Only 3% of organizations today are getting ready for the fifth generation of attack. Most people are really struggling with what we used to do 10 years ago, which is not bad for us. We sell also the second and third generation solutions. Right. But I think the message that I'm trying to convey to the world, if you want to be secure, you need to step up to the and fifth generation. Is that generation. a process issue or is that, a, is that a, just a software issue or is there, there are a lot of components to this? There are several components. In small, mid-sized companies, it's relatively easy because they can make these decisions quickly. In large organizations, it's more complicated because they have huge organizations that are dealing each one with their own domain. And the issue is to consolidate and step up and not to deal with... That's what I used to do. I used to manage that component. I used right. to manage that component. Uh, final quick question because we have to go. But in, the, in, in, a in a cloud world where you see the Amazons and Microsofts and Googles starting to develop their own security uh, stacks in the stack, where do you fit into all of that? I think we fit in on top of it, and that's always been our job. Whatever the vendors are doing in the operating system, in the router, in, the, in whatever, we want to give the layer of security that's above that, and we've been doing that for 25 years. By the way, mobile phones, I think, are the real backdoor to all our assets these days. That's the, and only less, less than 1% of organizations are trying, are using something to secure their mobile phones. 